What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. If you haven't yet or you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. For all latest Dodgers news, rumors, hype videos, podcasts, you're going to find it right here. So be sure to smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. Thanks to you, it's the fastest growing Dodgers YouTube channel in the game. So be sure to tell your friends, tell your family, any Dodger fans you know, tell them to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So we've got an update on Bruce Dar Gratterall. So the bazooka didn't throw very much in Venezuela during the offseason. So why exactly was he unable to throw regularly in Venezuela? That has not been revealed yet. But a few days ago, Bill Plunkett tweeted out, Dodgers Bruce Dar Gratterall has yet to throw off a mound this spring. Dave Roberts, there were some things this winter that didn't allow for him to get off a mound and throw as consistently as he'd like. And then today, Dave Roberts gave this update on Bruce Dar Gratterall and Joe Kelly. Bruce Dar and Joe. Yeah, um, so Bruce Dar is ahead of Joe right now. Uh, it, it makes it a lot easier that you know to to see him early on in the season as one inning guys. Um, I think that uh, Bruce Dar is in a, in a pretty good spot, although he started a little bit later. The ramp up, you know, Joe Joe's a ways away though. How many times would you like to see them get into bullpens or live BPs or in a game for you to kind of feel comfortable with them? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, every everyone's different. But uh, to be in a handful of games, you know, is, is probably the floor. So the Dodgers rolled the dice on Joe Kelly. They saw him up close and personal in the 2018 World Series, and they really like what they saw. Joe Kelly was excellent in the 2018 postseason. He pitched 11 and thirds innings, allowed just one run, but in the regular season, he wasn't lights out. He ended up going to that slurve pitch and really got hot in October. And thanks to that, he was able to get a big bag from the Dodgers. That three-year deal, $25 million guarantee, where he could earn as much as $33 million in that contract. Now, has Joe Kelly been a bust in his time in Los Angeles? Well, if you look at it, in his two years in L.A., he has a 4.11 ERA through 61 in the third innings pitched, a 14.02 whip, a 3.73 FIP, a 10.4 strikeouts per nine. That's definitely respectable, but he just hasn't been that high leverage guy that the Dodgers thought they were getting. In the postseason, in 2019, he had a 23.14 ERA. Opponents were hitting 4.17 against him, and then in the 2020 postseason, he posted a 2-4-5 ERA in three and two-thirds innings pitched. Opponents were hitting 308 against him. He had a 1.64 whip. So he was supposed to be that guy in October, and look what happened in 2019. 10th inning, game five. He gives up the grand salami to Howie Kendrick. If he gets us out of that inning, who knows what happens that season. But I think his lasting legacy in L.A. is going to be him taking out the trash in Houston. Look out. That was a off-speed pitch that spills him. Gray now looking out there. Do not apologize. Let the fear, let the mystery of what was that about, let that linger in the hitter's eyes. So, yeah, a lot of Dodger fans love that moment. We're always going to have the Joe Kelly pouty face. We're always going to have the nice swing pitch. But was that moment against the Astros worth $25 million? I'm not so sure about that. But he did come through in game two of the NLDS in 2020. Kenley Jansen, he was just not getting it done out there. And Joe Kelly comes in and he puts out the fire, gets Hosmer to ground out to end the game. So that was big because if they even the series, who knows what happens in the NLDS. But for the most part, you have to admit, Joe, Joe Kelly has not lived up to his contract. Has Joe Kelly been a bust as a Dodger? In my eyes, the answer is no. For what he did against the Houston Astros, that makes him bust proof for me. Has he lived up to his contract? Was he one of Andrew Freeman's best signings? I think the answer is also no on that one. Now, I'm hoping this year they can get something out of him, but it just does not look good so far. Who knows what it is? It always seems to be something with Joe Kelly. So I'm just hoping what will likely be his last year in L.A. that he can produce, that he can find a way to control 
contribute to this team, and he can find a way to be an above average Joe Kelly in 2021. And then there's the future of the Los Angeles Dodgers bullpen, Bazooka Bruzdar Gratterall. So much has been made about his strikeout numbers. Five strikeouts per nine in the regular season, a 14.8K percentage. Those numbers did go up a tick in the postseason, specifically the NLCS. He had a 10.8 strikeouts per nine against the Bravos in the NLCS. Now, what does Bruzdar need to do to become the closer of the Los Angeles Dodgers? Well, one, he definitely needs to find a way to miss more bats. There's been talk that he's working with Walker Buehler on developing his slider, but you have to wonder, how does a guy that averages 99.3 miles per hour on that two-seamer, why doesn't he miss more bats? Well, first of all, he throws that two-seamer, so it's not going to be a four-seamer that's going to give you that perceived rise. It's going to miss more bats. It's a two-seamer, so you're going to naturally get more soft contact, induce more ground balls, and he was ninth amongst all relievers last year in ground ball percentage at 61.5%. So when you watch the bazooka pitch, you'll notice a lot of quick innings, a lot of quick, easy ground ball outs, and all of a sudden, you know, he's pointing at the sky, getting all pumped. But you also want to look at that walk percentage. He was third in all of Major League Baseball among relievers with the lowest walk rate at 2.5%. So that tells you that he's painting the strike zone with strikes and hitters are putting it in play and that's how he's generating all of his outs. So I don't want to get too caught up in him missing bats. Yes, that is the next step in his development, but what he does, he does at an elite level and I don't want to mess with that. And also, Bruzdar has already battle-tested in the postseason. He gave up three runs in Game 4 of the NLCS, but other than that, he went six and two-thirds innings of scoreless baseballs. And if you want to talk about strikeouts, he came through in Game 7 of the NLCS. He comes in, the Dodgers are trailing by a run. He walks the first batter, and then he gets two big punch outs. So he was able to miss bats when it mattered. And I think that Bruce Dark Gratterall is a budding superstar. He's going to take over this town when he takes the reins as the closer in the ninth inning at some point in his career. Now, will it be this year? I'm not so sure about that. But one thing I do know is that we have to continue to let Bruce Dar be Bruce Dar. Don't try to tinker with his windup. I've heard people out there saying, oh, it could make him more injury prone, his style. But look, power pitchers, they're always more prone to injury than other ones. You can't think of it like that. You just have to continue to develop him, and hopefully he avoids major injury. He has had some injury concerns in the past. We know that with his shoulder, but this guy is something special. It's going to be Bruce Star Gratterall in L.A. for many years to come, but it's really important that we get Bruce Star Gratterall ready to go in spring training. We continue to develop him. As far as Joe Kelly goes, it's his last year with the Dodgers. I hope he makes the most of it, but I'm less concerned about Joe Kelly in spring training. I'm more concerned with Bruce Dar Gratterall because I think he's just scratching the surface as a pitcher. I think he's got a lot of room to grow, and I think that at some point he'll take over the reins as the closer. I like his current song, Lil Wayne's Fireman. That's his current entrance music. I think he might switch that up. How about Tupac's Ambitions as a Rida? I want your take on that. What would you guys have as your entrance music as a closer, and what do you want to see Bruce Dar Gratterall's entrance music be, and do you think he'll be the closer by the end of this season? Give me a Y for yes, or give me an N for no, and then also, was Joe Kelly a bust as a Los Angeles Dodger so far? Give me your takes down below in the comment section, and if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. For all latest Dodgers news, rumors, hype videos, podcasts, interviews, you're going to find it right here. It's the fastest growing Dodgers YouTube channel in the game, so be sure to smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. Tell your friends, tell your family, all your Dodger friends and family, let them know where to find us here at the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. That's at DMAC underscore LA. For the latest Dodgers Nation merch, head over to GearUp.LA. Some of the best Dodgers t-shirt designs in the game, you're going to find right over there at GearUp.LA. For the latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.